Okay, so Dodge Rampage, you've got Car and Driver having an excellent article on this, and they didn't now, they don't, I should say, have a title that leads to misinterpretation. I really like Car and Driver. Um, I really like them. I, I, growing up as a kid, I think my for a little while, my dream was to work for, for Car and Driver. Uh, I think they're a great news outlet, and they don't have you know, misleading titles. So a lot of YouTube videos are talking about, you know, don't buy a Maverick, wait for this or that. And here you've just got an honest article saying it's not available currently in our market. So let's see if I can bring it a little over here. So not currently available in our market. It's currently for the Brazilian and Argentinian market, but it has a powertrain. It's designed by the US team at Stellantis. So that's very good news. That helps bring this further away from a zero chances of be coming to, you know, being available to us and could actually come to us before a Toyota Stout because a Toyota Stout is going to be, if they do officially say it's coming out, the thing is going to be, you know, the demand is very high. It's going to get sold out very quick and it's going to have a very long wait time. Now this in Brazil already has a major issue. In 28 minutes, they sold out not only their initial 500 units that they were offering, but they extended that to an extra 12 or 1300 units and they sold out within 28 minutes. Now, of course, having only 500 slots available for this truck is because Ram wanted the news to be sold out in 28 minutes. <laughs> and because they had more demand than 500, they did uh, allow an extra 12 or 1300 uh, units. So it would also sell, I think, very well in our market and i'd love to hear what the community thinks about it what do you think of the looks of this vehicle um marie what do you think of the looks of this yeah vehicle? it's uh really the, the the same kind of look that ram has for the other uh, big truck so it, it fits in the family i guess <laughs> if i could say that uh, like that uh yeah it's a uh, it, it's a great looking and i'm pretty sure with that look it will be a great competitor of uh, the maverick dual exhaust in the back so i think that's very cool mm -hmm. nice lights you know molded lights kind of like a layered look to it even the the metal around the lights here try to zoom in the metal around the lights kind of bevels in so this is a very layered look you've got layering around the wheels it pops out on the wheels you can't quite see that as well because you know well i for some reason my face is still showing up i should have this across everything so we can <laughs> zoom in a little bit better but this is actually a very well cut defined layered vehicle i think it's got a pretty sexy look mm -hmm. i like how this vehicle looks the powertrain worries me a little because it's the same powertrain as the hornet and the dodge hornet well one youtube channel had it and they didn't have it very long and the dash lit up like christmas lights mm -hmm. and traditionally despite consumer reports saying that the ram 1500 is you know their number one pick for reliability i'm i'm not one to put stellantis as a number one pick for reliability now consumer reports looks at problems reported within the first year so if you do a lot less recalls and you have technology that is easy to use, well, you won't have people coming in because really in the first year, no matter what you buy, unless it's a Land Rover, you're probably not gonna have any problems in, any real problems in your first year. And Consumer Reports, JD Power, they're not looking at what kind of problems. You know, they're not looking at did the motor blow, did the transmission blow, because across all the manufacturers, that would almost never happen. Mm -hmm almost never happen. There's always cases and of course they go we see them on forums, we see them on the internet and then we assume, assume one engine fire or 50 Bronco engines going on the 2.7 liter and then there's this idea that the 2.7 liter really isn't a reliable engine when Ford has made, you know, what 400,000 of them across F150s, uh, Ford Edges, Lincolns, they've made hundreds of thousands of 2.7 liters and now because, you know, it's um 
a logical fallacy and it's normal that it happens in all our brains, but you have to fight against how our brain normally will often be driven by the heart. So the heart, you could say, or the part of the, the less logical part of the brain will see one or two, you know, whether it's a Ford Maverick or, a, you know, a BMW engine, you see one or two on fire online and you go, oh, I'm, oh my goodness, we, there's a big problem. I wouldn't buy that. There's, And that's your survival mechanism kick, kicking in. It's not just an emotional response, and I don't mean that in a negative way, but our brains are programmed to keep us alive. We are, you know, up until 100 years ago, there is evolution that made sure that the humans that did survive were the smartest, most cautious ones. They're the ones that didn't die off before reproducing. So, you know, the type of person that sticks their finger into a light bulb switch at the age of 20, well, they don't exist. They died, you know, thousands <laughs> of years ago, sticking their finger in the equivalent of a light, a light switch, an electrical switch back then. So a bear's bottom, you know, that would get you killed a couple thousand years ago. A bear's bottom. You put your finger in as a caveman, you're dead. Neanderthal, whatever it may be. So the strong the strongest and smartest have survived our brains are geared that if we see a blown engine or 50 blown engines on the bronco our brain says that's not safe don't get the bronco it's our survival instinct kicking in it's what's <laughs> made us you know what we are today survival instincts with the cars yeah well our, our brains don't get <laughs> rewired just because we're looking at our, our car mm. and up until recently data didn't exist 500 years ago you didn't have data telling you if your castle builder you know what his stats were for building castles you were like i you know what i'm gonna go with this castle builder because his castles haven't been raided or you know f the walls haven't fallen under cannon fire if we're talking about two three hundred years ago these things weren't being you know collected as data so data is a new thing and you have to really force your brain into looking at data instead of just going with your initial reaction forums unfortunately really trigger our initial reactions our survival instincts so if you see one maverick on fire you get the idea that all of youtube lights up with reasons not to get a maverick and don't get a maverick wait for this flying unicorn so <laughs> a lot of these trucks okay the toyota stout is more likely you're more likely to get a toyota stout than a unicorn but you're also you know if YouTube's telling you, you know, don't buy a Maverick if you can't get one on the yard, well, if you work at a dealership, at a Ford dealership, you know, having an available Maverick, you, people might, you know, you might as well just answer people, you know what, wait one moment, I'll go jump on my unicorn, fly out back, ask the leprechaun to bring me one up, and I'll, dr I'll drive you back your available Maverick in the color and trim that you want. <laughs> An available Maverick isn't going to happen, you know, a lot of available Mavericks in the trims and colors we want to have proper choice isn't going to happen for a few years. So you can definitely get a truck, but you need to order it. There might be some new Rangers available at some dealerships because, well, um, at least here they're not you know the the doors aren't breaking down for new ford rangers which we will possibly get to this evening <laughs> now the dodge the the dodge rampage was also at one time you know based off of a car well it was a small truck with a bed and it was based off the platform of a vehicle and i think this would be great if it came to our market because i think it's going to push the Maverick, if it comes and you know, this is very likely to happen. So I'm going to wrap up Rampage talk. I'd say this coming to our market is an eight and a half. Dodge just have, has to, you know, okay it. And they have to okay it with though with enough production. You don't want to okay it when the Brazilian and Argentinian market won't even be satisfied. You can't then just open it up to Canada and the US and have a real crisis on your hands of having far too many buyers versus supply. And this would risk having far too many buyers versus supply because it is very, very nice. Look at this beautiful 
10 point something, 10 point, sorry, 12.3 inch screen. Behind the steering wheel, you've got a 10.3 inch screen. And the interior is fantastic. And you can even get an RT model on this to have that dual exhaust in the back. You've got a little shifter dial the way you do on the Maverick. And this would probably be a little bit, I have a feeling this would be a little bit more expensive than the current Lariat Maverick if it did come to our ma market. But one thing I can guarantee is this is a truck you can't get. You can't get it now. And if it does get offered to, right now they can't feed, properly feed and satisfy the Brazilian and Argentinian market. I think it's going to be very much sold out and, or, and have probably a year or two waiting list down in their market. And if they opened it up to our market, very, very few people would actually get this vehicle. So Dodge, to make this happen, needs to throw production to another factory. And that costs dollars. And that's why I'm not saying this is, you know, 10 out of 10 going to happen because Dodge has to decide if the investment is worth it. If they need to, you know, either cancel a model and switch production to the, of that canceled model for the Rampage, well, then they're going to be losing money on, you know, whatever that model was. Now, does Dodge have a model right now that's not selling in high enough volumes to make proper profit possibly but they would need to sell enough of these which they would but at a high enough profit to, to for it to be worth canceling out a model just like ford to have the ford maverick people you know the automobile industry was like what is ford doing getting rid of cars no ford tours no ford focus no ford fiesta and as an insider what was great i wasn't stressed at all because ford basically you know kindly was like don't worry we're canceling these vehicles and you do sell Ford Focuses in high volumes and you sell Fiestas in high volumes and every so often you sell a Ford Taurus but don't and no <laughs> no not a whole lot of people were crying that the Ford Taurus was going to go out the the fan base though for the Ford Taurus those that did buy them were crying because it was a fantastic vehicle I had a Ford Taurus all-wheel drive that thing was a beast it was a tank I felt like that vehicle deserved a 50 cal on the roof for how much of a tank it was I drove that through the my uh, the worst snowstorm of my life and that thing just powered through but anyways Ford said don't worry we're cutting out these models but we're gonna be bringing in and more SUVs and trucks that you will really sell. And yes, uh, Graveyard Prospecting, the Taurus SHO is very, very cool. So Ram isn't selling enough 1500s. And with how far off it is from the 50 mile per gallon cafe rules, they need to not be selling as many 1500s as they traditionally have. They need to switch their clientele onto something else or pay essentially the tax man so this would be great uh the i think this is a very logical choice if they sh cut out one or two models let's say there's a factory that builds two models it wouldn't be a bad idea in my opinion for a dodge to cut out those two models unless you know take your lowest gross models with the lowest volume possible and put production of the ram page here in the United States or Canada, because that's what Canadian and American buyers want to see, and then sell the ones that are made in the US to the US and Canada. And then you're going to have something that you can help, that will help get you down to that 50 mile per gallon rule that you need, everyone needs to slowly be getting towards that. So the Laramie model, style wise, not for me you can see the dual exhaust is gone you get that on the rt now we almost certainly would not get a diesel model of this currently in brazil and argentina they do get the diesel model mm. it's not doesn't have a ton of power though it's about 158 <laughs> horsepower so nothing to write home about and i'm just gonna oh, there we go <laughs> nothing to write home about but uh, there's that 10.3 inch digital screen behind the screen, 12.3 inch screen. If this does come to market, it's going to force Ford with the Maverick either as a mid-model refresh, which I would suspect for 2025, or the whole new model, which generally happens, you know, five to eight years after the initial model. So 2022 uh, Maverick, we should get an all new model, you know, five to 
max eight years after that. But if this comes to market, Ford cannot handle having this vehicle on market available in good numbers for very long without upgrading the Maverick. So I hope this comes to, ma to the market because I think it'll be pretty darn decent and it will make the Ford Maverick get a lot better. So dial shifter right there. Let's just wrap up the photos because I do find them to be interesting. The RT would not be a free model. Uh, some people would complain about price, but this is going to be, if it comes to market, a whole lot less expensive. So 8.5 out of 10 for likelihood it comes that it comes to our market. And Dodge needs to sell these. They need to sell several hundred thousand. They need to sell two to 400,000 less 1500s per year, but have all those sales of 1500s for people that maybe don't quite need a 1500. They really need to be selling, splitting that between the new Rampage and bringing back the Dakota. Your dad had a Dakota. Mm -hmm. How did you feel about that truck? It was a great truck. I really loved it. Uh, the design was uh, so nice. I guess it was uh, 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 2003, I guess, uh, the year around that. <laughs> maybe a little uh, older than that. But we, we really love that truck. It was a good uh, good look. Goes well. It was a V8. <laughs> V8 or V6? I don't, I don't, I'm not sure. Did he keep it long enough for it to rust really badly? I uh, keep it uh, seven years. Okay. And it didn't rust because my father always uh, does... Um, Washes it often and does undercoat. undercoatings. Yeah. Yeah, he's very responsible. <laughs> Ex -military. We don't have the choice here in Quebec with the winter. Well, a lot of people don't make the right choice, but mm -hmm. he's ex-military, so he keeps his things tip-top shape. Yeah. And he's a gentleman. Shape. I'm very lucky. <laughs> yeah, so I'm happy uh, Ram has, uh, could have a, a new smaller truck. And at the same time, it's, it looks a little like the Colorado. I yeah. love the look. That's a great now, truck look. Now, the one thing that worries me is that it does use the Hurricane 2.0 liter, 2 liter, the 2 liter four-cylinder engine. And actually, if this comes to market in to cover the when, if it comes to market in two years, we'll get to see how reliable that 2 liter engine from the Hornet is. It's the Lantis, so that's my main concern. And yeah, that's my, my main concern. But size-wise, this is very much poised to be able to compete with the Maverick. It'd be a good competitor. Both companies would benefit from, you know, challenging each other because right now it's this Rampage is 198 inches long, 74.3 inches wide, and 70.1 inches tall. And that makes it roughly 1.7 inches shorter from, you know, front to back than the Maverick, but 1.5 inches taller than the Maverick. So this, this would work. Uh, it's the wheelbase is three inches shorter though. So I, I, you know what people need an affordable truck. I think this would be a huge sales success. The only question is, can they make the choice? Can they dedicate an entire factory because you, you, they need to dedicate a whole factory. They need to be able to have production around 200,000 units per year. Otherwise they're just going to upset the market. You know, they've had the, the Ford Ma Maverick, they offered a small truck to the market when one had never existed. So I think we're all willing to be a little more tolerable to wait for production to come up to higher levels. We all, most of, many of us, everyone who watches this channel knows that the Ford Maverick is made in the same factory as the Bronco Sport. So that factory can only make about 300,000 units per year. So we can only expect about 150,000 Ford Mavericks per year unless we lose the Bronco Sport altogether. So that's not impossible. That could potentially happen, but Bronco Sport sales are pretty darn good and it's it's a good model. I especially love it with the 2 liter and I find it very decent with the 1.5 liter. I actually find the 1.5 liter, I was very surprised. There's a review on our channel. I went in thinking this isn't going to be enough motor and I finished with, that was plenty of motor as a daily driver. I, I wouldn't buy it as like, you know, my sports truck. I need a Ford Ranger Raptor for that. But <laughs> I, was, I was very impressed. A good little three-cylinder engine. Very powerful for the size. Now, if it does get that two liter, of course, it's going to be making 260 
8 horsepower and 295 pound-feet of torque or thereabout because they might bring the horsepower and the torque down to protect the engine under heavy loads or heavy towing. Um, but you know what's great? Car and driver didn't go ahead and say, you know, this is a truck that currently exists, but they didn't even speculate, oh, if it comes to U can U.S. market, it's going to tow this much. All the, U the YouTube channels that I mentioned earlier for the Toyota Stout said that the Toyota Stout is going to be much better off-road. It's going to tow, you know, a lot more. It's going to be so much more reliable and on and on and on. And Toyota doesn't have a prototype. And... Toyota hasn't talked at all about it's towing too soon. or payload. And they're trying in the video saying that the Ford Maverick's payload isn't enough. The Ford Maverick's payload and towing are fantastic. 4,000 pounds of towing and 1,500 pounds of payload is amazing. The Rampage has 1,688, uh, sorry, 1,653 pound feet, uh, sorry, pounds of payload. And that's incredible because that's more than a classic Ram mm -hmm. 1500. So that's incredible. So yes, I hope this product does come to market. And that does wrap up the episode mm -hmm. on the Dodge Rampage, giving you all the information you need to know. And if this does come to market, well, they need to organize a whole factory or half of a factory for doing that. So canceling a model they definitely, it's Stellantis. I, I don't think they're in a position to build a whole new factory for this. The current factory that builds them doesn't have enough to even satisfy the Brazilian and Argentinian markets. So they will need to, if they build a factory, we're talking, you know, four or five years. But I think that they will, they would cancel a model and have production take the place of that model, in which case we could see it as early as two years. So I'd say 2025, if they go, if they wait long enough to actually have its own factory and build a factory for this, well, then we're talking 2027 or 2028. And these things will sell it fast. So just if they do get offered it in our market, it's going to be the same as the Ford Maverick. You're going to order and then you're going to wait a good amount of time before you can get one. If the Toyota Stout gets announced as as being official they'll have a prototype and before the first person gets one in their yard we're going to be talking one to two years from when they show the prototype easily and because there'll be a lot of demand for an affordable truck because most so many people a good percentage of traditional truck buyers can no longer afford a truck what's going to happen with the toyota stout you think maverick wait times are bad toyota rav4 prime is at three to five years, depending on the dealership, unless you pick up a canceled order off somebody. So Toyota Stout, if it gets, if it's available in, you know, two to four years, you can then suspect to get in line and wait, depending how quickly you get in line anywhere from one to three years for that. Mm. So the advice, the, the advice of, you know, don't get a Maverick, wait for whatever it is, X, Y, and Z. Toyota Stout, Dodge Rampage, it's not good advice because they're going to have the same annoying wait times and they're not even available right now. So my conclusion to all of this is unfortunately, we all need something that's in very short supply these days and that's patience <laughs> because you need patience if you want a Ford Maverick and you need to also order one and you need patience if you're going to wait on a non-existent Toyota Stout that may never exist. And you need patience and prayers to hope that the Rampage comes to our market.